so that house right there um, caused this neighborhood a huge amount of heartache. And there were criminal activity, the criminal element coming here. There was uh, people with warrants, people with drugs. I could come home for lunch and watch 10 deals down by in front of my house where my son's bus stop is. You know, we, we roundtabled this at the Neighborhood Livability Partnership meeting several different times. Um, we worked in conjunction with our drug team. Right now, it is shut down. It has been for the last couple months. This was a project that started late in 2017. Corporal Venables really spearheaded this. And it's an attempt to try and bring together multiple departments and community partners to work together on certain houses that may be posing challenges. The livability is the biggest issue well, one of the biggest issues there are in uh, the city. I mean, nobody wants to live next to a, a drug house. And there's traffic in and out all day long, and it affects your ability to have your kids be able to play outside and feel safe, and you know, making sure you're double, double checking and locking all your doors, it's just not fun. It really affects your day-to-day -day activity. The city understands that it's going to take several different departments and community partners to solve this problem. So the city has implemented an interdepartmental approach. We engage with the legal department, the planning department staff, our communications uh, coordinator, uh, code enforcement, building and safety to come up with solutions on a property by property basis, which is really the key. At that point, when we talk about each property and dissect what's going on in that situation, then we can engage our community partners that are, going to, that are going to be the most impactful for that property situation. That creates a stronger impact for a community. A lot of times my role at NLP is when we're talking about an individual and a home and how that's impacting the local community to really add perspective about what might be happening with that person and how we can provide supports and social supports to maybe um, get at the root of the problem that's kind of causing that disruption to the community. We are trying to work collaboratively and think outside of the box and come up with creative, innovative solutions that help improve long-term the day-to-day -day quality of life in certain neighborhoods where there may be properties that are causing repeat problems. In this scenario, we actually had to uh, serve a search warrant at the house and arrest a bunch of people. The morning that it happened, my son had a baseball game and we came home that night and it felt like a brand new world. Families were out gardening, playing, exercising in the street and it had felt like it had gone from a ghost town to like Pleasantville. Because of the partnerships that we've created, we're able to uh, immediately start plugging the resources in. I appreciate, you know, MPD's perspective when they say, you know, we can show up and board a place up, but what does that really do in terms of helping those people not to maybe just move to another community? There have been 31 properties that have been resolved um, out of the 47 that we've identified here in the city of about 80,000 people. So by engaging with each other and combining our resources and sharing those resources and having conversation and bringing that to the table, we can really do our jobs more effectively.